Hi there, welcome to this CBT Nuggets micro nugget entitled, What's the difference between URI, URL, and URN? My name is Tim Warner. In my professional experience, just about anyone who works on the web or makes their living doing networking stuff comes across acronyms like URI, URL, and perhaps URN. And of course, the obvious question is, is there a difference among these three-letter acronyms, and if so, what is that difference? Now, we can get into a huge discussion of semantics here. You can look at the source documents that define these terms, the World Wide Web Consortium, or W3C. You can look at the request for comments, or RFC libraries. Actually, Wikipedia has a pretty good article on URI that, if for no other reason, is good because it points you to the relevant W3C and RFC white papers, but I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. All three of these terms are uniform. In other words, they're meant to relate to some network-based resource. This could be an HTML static web page that's advertised to the world. It could be a PDF document that's hosted on an internal SharePoint site at some business. It's some network-based resource, and we need some standard or uniform way to reference the presence, name, and discrete location of that resource. That becomes important when, for instance, we're designing an application programming interface for a web application. We need to be able to talk a consistent language so that we can do networking, basically. And here is the meat and potatoes, friends. I have it capitalized down here as a fortune cookie type summary that all URLs are URIs, but not all URIs are URLs. First we have, let's look at the left side of my Visio diagram, the Uniform Resource Identifier, or URI. This is a designation that serves as the generic, the most generic way to reference a network-based resource. Now, here's the deal. URIs can take the form of a URN or a URL. So URI does not give the specific protocol we use to find a resource, does not give the exact directory path to find a resource. It's a generic identifier. The implementation of a URI can take the form of a uniform resource name, or a uniform resource locator, or URL. A typical web address is classified as a URL. This parent-child relationship I'm drawing lets you know that this fortune cookie representation is valid, that all URLs derive from URIs, but not all URIs are URLs. Now let me put this in a practical example context, and hopefully it'll become crystal clear for you. Let's look at the subject of book publishing. If you know much at all about books, books in the United States are imprinted and assigned a globally unique value, an ISBN number, let's say. So let's say we have this book called Guide, and its globally unique identifier, its ISBN is 03332. We could represent this address, this name actually, in a standard way like you see here. This can serve in two contexts. We can refer to this name, this globally unique name, as either a URI in its most general generic form, or a URN, which has some rules associated with it actually. I've often seen people describe URIs and URNs by using a name. I could say that my name is Tim Warner, and that serves as a uniform resource identifier, but it doesn't tell you exactly where to find me on this globe. If that were the case, then we could be talking about a URL. The reason why just a simple name like Tim Warner isn't a URN is because there's no global uniqueness, you see. There are several other Tim Warners in the world. Even in my city of Nashville, Tennessee, there are several Tim Warners. I don't feel very unique at all. A URN would be, for instance, my name with some global unique identifier attached, maybe my social security number. You see what I'm saying? And then if we added my geospatial coordinates to where I am on the globe and how to find me, that might be considered a URL if it were formatted properly. Again, we have to always consider web standards and formatting these addresses, these identifiers, names, and locations in a standard way. 
Now, to return to my book example, I mentioned that the ISBN gives you a globally unique name for a book, in this case, so that that identifier can serve as either a URI or a URN. That URI URN becomes a URL if and only if we specify exactly how to get to that resource. And as you know, with URLs, we have a header, a protocol prefix. It doesn't have to be HTTP or HTTPS. That's a common misconception that some folks have about URLs. We have FTP. That's a valid header. We have file for local resources, and the list goes on. Back when I initially got into the web, we had gopher. Anybody remember that? And then we have the fully qualified path to find that resource. So in my example, I have a web server named host, a virtual directory called dir, and then finally guide.pdf is the actual resource name. This entire string serves to uniquely identify the name and location of this object on the web. So there you have it, friends. This is an abridged Cliff Notes definition of the distinction among URI, URN, and URL terms. I hope that this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.